Hey there, welcome to Walnut Hill Online. I'm Crystal Allington, the online campus pastor, and it really is a pleasure to be worshiping here with you today. You know, Walnut Hill Online is a place where we all can gather, no matter who you are or where you are in your journey with Jesus. We get to lean in and worship as we sing and pray and give and learn from the word of God. You know, I really believe that you belong here and you are not here by mistake. Go ahead and connect into our community today. Jump into a chat. Say hey to a host. We would love to greet you and to get to know you better. And if you're new here today, God bless you. Let me be the first to welcome you to Walnut Hill Online. If you could visit walnuthillonline.org slash new and fill out that connect card, it gives us a chance to meet you and greet you, to send you a small welcome gift, to learn how we can serve you and how we can pray for you. We really want to connect with you on the other side of the screen. You know, prayer is also a really important part of our community here. If you visit walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer, you'll gain access to one of our prayer servants who is gifted and trained in prayer and would love to pray for whatever is on your heart and mind today. Please don't be shy. This is what we do here as family together. Your kids are also part of our community. If you visit walnuthillonline.org slash kids, you'll gain access to our age-appropriate Christ-centered lessons just for them so that they can grow in faith and learn about Jesus just as you will today during service. So now is the perfect time for you to go ahead and create that distraction-free area. Clear your space out. Get rid of anything that could take you away from your worship and hearing from the Lord because the Lord does want to speak to you today. And as you do that, let me encourage you and remind you of who we are as we are called to arise and shine. I'm going to read to you from Isaiah chapter 60. And the Bible says, Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. And we are called to arise and shine, to be that light that shines in the darkness, to reveal the glory of the Lord in this world. That is who we are and who we are called to be. So I pray that as we engage in worship, you would be transformed. Let's take this moment right now to dedicate this moment of worship to the Lord. Oh, Jesus, we thank you so much that we can come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We really fix our gaze and focus on you today because we want to hear what you have to say. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and that you would transform us so that we can be the people you have called and created us to be, that we could go out and arise and shine in every place that we go. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, welcome again to Walnut Hill Online. Let's worship together. Praise him together. So love. 
waiting. God so loved the world. Let's give him a shout of praise this morning. Amen, amen. Welcome to Walnut Hill. We got a really special uh, Sunday. Um, I want to uh, just say to you guys that that song is straight from scripture. Amen. Do you guys know that God loved you so much, loves you so much that he gave his, his one and only son. Amen. You guys believe that here this morning? I want to welcome you all that are here in person and online. I want to welcome anybody that's a visitor here today. I know it's the holidays and I want you to, um, if you've never been to church before, the Lord loves you and wants to get to know you. That's it. He loves all of us and he wants you to know him better. So that's why we sing these songs this morning. Amen? Um, second thing, um, we've got a real special surprise. I'm not going to give it away, but let's give it up for Trezor, guest worship leader today. He's our brother. We love him. And also, uh, every last Sunday of the month, it's Youth Sunday. So we've got our youth and young adults representing this morning. Let's give it up. And thank you for Kristen. For uh, She does a lot of that stuff with the youth. So thank you, Kristen. And yeah, so let's continue to sing. This one is called See the Light.
walking in your freedom now Covered by your grace Witness in the healing power We have been changed
Jesus' name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. God is holy. That's a description given to him in scripture. And so we want to invite you to join us to sing this song with us. Amen. Oh, we bless your name. You are holy. Yeah. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing a song of ages to the Lamb. Well, if you know the lyrics, we can lift up our hands together. And all who've gone before us, yes, God, all who will believe, will sing a song of ages to the living. This will be the song that your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name it stands above them all, yes, above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above the more and the angels cry, oh holy, all creation cries, oh holy, you will forgiven this morning if you've been forgiven if you've been redeemed sing a song forever to the land if you walk in freedom this morning and if you walk in the freedom Jesus gives if you obey his name sing a song forever to the land we will sing a song we will sing a song
salvation cries. We bless the name of the Lord. That you will leave dead high. Oh, holy, holy forever. He, your people, just said the bell, like, come on and say, He, your people. up your voice if you can and just bless the name of the Lord. Just thank him and just worship the name of the Lord. Oh, we worship the name of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We've just joined with the angels in heaven singing those words. Will you say, say those words with me if you know them? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let's say it again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And with a little more feeling, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Amen. Isn't it good to be together to worship the Lord? We have literally, literally, and I'm using that word in the right way today, literally just joined with the angels to worship our God. We've just done it. What a privilege to be able to come together to do that today. And now your privilege is to take a seat and relax for a moment. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. And Thanksgiving is a special time, isn't it? Last week we talked about some of the challenges and even some of the pains that come along with the Thanksgiving season, but it's also a time for us to, to, to take a step back and just thank the Lord for, for what he has done in our lives, and what he is doing in our lives, and what we anticipate that he will do in our lives. And I hope you've had the chance to do that at some point this week. For those of you online, I, I would just encourage you as we spend time together here as well in the Bethel campus and in all of our campuses, to take some time just to focus on Thanksgiving this week. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, so happy to be here with you. One of the great things about Thanksgiving is that it is a time that we often come together with family. And um, I've had that opportunity as well with my family. Most of you know that um, my actual brother, not just my brother in Christ, is Brian Mowry. And uh, we've, we have Brian and Becca here with us today. And one of the great benefits, oh yeah, you can clap if you want to. One of the great benefits of the fact that we continue to be blood brothers is that we get together at the, at the holidays and therefore we make Brian and Becca work when they come home. But we wanted to, to be able to share this family time together and invite Brian to, to share in a moment and I'm gonna invite Becca up in a moment as well. Um, but I just wanna tell you that uh, it's, it's just so good to be family together. And I don't know where you're coming from. You actually may have struggled with some of the family dynamics of this past week. But here at Walnut Hill Community Church, when you walk through the doors, I hope that you experience the family of God. That's what we want you to experience. If you're here new today, I hope you truly experience what it means to be part of this church family. We hope you, we want to embrace you. We want to invite you in. We want you to feel and know that wonderful power of the presence of our God through his Holy Spirit. Just as we've experienced in worship, in worship we want to experience that together. So welcome. We're so glad that you're here. I want to invite my sister-in-law, Becca, to come and lead us into a Thanksgiving moment in prayer. You know, if you're today so far as I've stood next to Becca, I've felt a little inadequate, I have to admit, because people are going straight around me to hug you. I mean, so someone give me like a charity hug today, please. <laughs> Thanks. Well, good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. It's so good to be here today. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for Walnut Hill. We've been driving around this weekend and I'm so thankful for this community. New England's so beautiful. I'm so thankful for the crazy roads and that people don't cut down trees here to build huge developments. I'm so thankful for this community. I'm so thankful for our country. 
for all the things that we have to complain about, we live in a wonderful country. And I'm saying, so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for the hundreds and thousands of men and women who were brave, who had determination and grit, and who's, upon whose backs this country was built. The sacrifice, the perseverance, the loss, every single person, and we are all here today because of them. I'm so thankful for those people. And I'm so thankful for Walnut Hill Visionaries. I don't know if we have any of our founding members here today, but we are so thankful for you that you had a vision to plant a church in the greater Danbury area, that the light and love of Jesus would be reached in this area. And we are benefiting because of your determination and your vision, so thank you for that. Brian and I are so grateful and so thankful for the 16 years of ministry that we've had here at Walnut Hill. And we are truly grateful for being able to raise our children, our four daughters, in such an amazing church community. So thank you for everything. And in this attitude of gratefulness, let's just thank the Lord for who he is. We've just sang so many amazing things about the Lord, but turning our hearts to gratitude. You know, you can't complain and be grateful at the same time. You can't worry and be grateful at the same time. So let's just really thank him with our whole hearts today. Jesus, we love you with all that we are and with all that we have. We love you and we just say thank you for your presence. Your presence really is enough. We thank you that you do not leave us or forsake us, that you are always faithful and you are always good. And so we thank you for times of praise and we thank you for times of sadness that in both the mountains and the valleys that you work in wonderful and mysterious ways to draw us to yourself and to reveal yourself to us. And so we just ask on this Thanksgiving weekend and on this first Sunday in Advent that you would continue to open our hearts. Lord, that you would renew our minds, that you would give us grit and determination and vision to step into everything that you are calling us to. And Lord, I pray for an outpouring of your love over this place and over in our lives and our homes so that the world would know that we are Christ followers by the way that we love one another. So we just give you glory and praise and thanksgiving. Help us become more disciplined in our thanksgiving and in our gratitude towards one another, but towards you above all. So we love you and we commit this time to you and we all sit together. Amen. Amen. Well, I have the privilege of reading our scripture passage for today, and it comes out of the book of Acts, Acts 16. And Acts is now the early church, so Christ has died, and he has been raised again, and he has sent the gift of his spirit. And now Paul, one of his disciples, Saul, who converted to Paul, is now out, and he's preaching the gospel. And he's doing the work of God, and, and he is now in deep water because he has cast out an evil spirit and he has brought freedom to a captive but people are not happy God's not some some people aren't always happy by God's work in their community and this is the case here and so the community is very angry and so that's where we pick up in this passage in Acts 16 and then there'll be a second passage that I'll read in just a moment as well so Acts 16 a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure that they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns and the other prisoners were listening. 
And then our second passage comes out of a letter that Paul is writing to encourage the church in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, so Paul is writing this, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. All right, good morning, church. Good morning. Was, good morning, church. Good morning. There you are. All right, well, today we have our kids with us and it is Family Sunday. And um, I'm Abby and I'm one of the worship leaders in our youth and our children's uh, ministries. And um, right now, it is time to dismiss the kids. If you are in grades kindergarten through sixth grade, head on out that door and follow Miss Liz. And for those of you who are still here, <laughs> uh, turn to your neighbor and greet one another. Good morning, everybody. Yes! <laughs> oh, that's so kind. Thank you. You haven't even heard what I want to say. It could be awful. It could be terrible. Who knows? Thank you. Uh, it is such a blessing uh, to be back. And I uh, just want to thank Adam and Craig for inviting us. And uh, like they actually invited us. I didn't just like come up here, right? <laughs> and uh, just so appreciative of that. I have to tell you that um, through church transition, this is actually abnormal yeah. where this gets to happen. And, uh, but it's been able to happen uh, through a couple churches called Walnut Hill Community Church and Kensington Church in Michigan that have a similar value, the same value of honoring Jesus Christ above all. And, uh, and so to get an invitation back uh, has just been a real honor and, and joy. Thank you. Um, quick update, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Uh, <laughs> we are transitioning still. Keep praying for us. I do have to say, we, we believe the Lord has us in the right place at the right time, and that God is doing a great thing. And uh, we, we love the people in Michigan, but we deeply miss uh, the relationships that we fostered over 16 years. And so um, keep praying for us. We're so thankful for you. And uh, it's so good to be, to be back. A lot of people have asked how the girls are doing, and they would love to have an extensive one-hour conversation with you after the service about that, I'm sure, each and every, no, I'm just kidding. They're doing fantastic. We remain so proud of each of our girls, McKenna, Nora, Reese, and Bria. They've just been extraordinary uh, through all of this. And uh, so I'm thankful for that as we, we talk about Thanksgiving. Today, I wanna talk about arising into gratitude. Uh, as we are in this Thanksgiving weekend, you know, I always pray that for me, it wouldn't just last for a weekend, right? That I'd actually be a grateful person that gives thanks throughout the whole entire year. And as I was thinking about that, you know, I think all of us could use an upgrade in our gratitude. And so I want to call this sermon Gratitude Upgrade. Do you need an upgrade in gratitude? I think all of us could go a level higher in gratitude. And so I want you just to, to say back at me, you've done a great job at this already. I'd love for you just to say back to me, it's time for an upgrade. Okay, ready? Here we go. It's time for an upgrade. Fantastic. Now look at your neighbor and say, it's time for an upgrade. 
I remember when I was 13 years old, uh, up to that point, I had never worn a pair of jeans in my life. I, I wore sweatpants all the way up until 13, and this was before sweatpants were cool. Like sweatpants right now are cool. It's what all the in kids are wearing, but not then. And I remember my older sister, who's seven and a half years older, Tina, and my brother, Craig, who's two and a half older than me, uh, they were going to a concert and I had never been to a concert, and I think it was a Michael W. Smith concert. So yeah, oh yeah, we were living on the edge, you know, uh, as kids. And I was like, I wanna go. And they said, you can only go if you take those sweatpants off and put a pair of jeans on. Because friends, it was time for an upgrade. I'm gonna need your participation here. I've got a few more. Okay, I've got a few more. I remember uh, when I went to my friend's house and saw that they were rocking a Nintendo and a Sega. We were still on the Atari system. It was time for an upgrade. I remember when I was 15 years old, you can see proof if you want it. I'm sure Craig would be glad to show it. He likes showing pictures of me when I was younger. But I was rocking at 15 years old the bull haircut, okay? And I realized quickly nobody else had the bowl haircut anymore because it was time for an upgrade, right? I remember at one point going to my friend's house and they had cable, like the youngest kid wasn't holding the bunny ears any longer. And I went home because that was my job, like to hold the bunny ears so everybody could watch the TV. And I realized it was time for an upgrade, right? You might be a, <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> You might be a Giants fan thinking to yourself right now, it's time for an upgrade, okay? You might be a Patriots fan right now going, we know it's time for an upgrade. I've lost all of you, I know. But it's Christmas time, right? Christmas time is coming. You might be looking at your phone going, it's time for an upgrade. You might be looking at your car that you drove here. You're not sure it's gonna start in the parking lot. You could donate it to the car ministry here at Walnut Hill because it's time for an upgrade. I don't know if this one will work either, but you might be looking at your, <laughs> you, you might be looking at your friends right now going, <laughs> it's time for an upgrade. There are some parents in the room right now and your children are dating and you know you need to look at them in the eyeballs and say, it's, oh, I need some more passion on that one. It's time for an upgrade. Time for an upgrade. I wonder, are you ready to upgrade today? Something more valuable than upgrading your kitchen or upgrading your car or even upgrading your, your friendships. Are you ready to upgrade your gratitude? Are you ready to upgrade your gratitude? You know, oftentimes on your phone, you'll see that there's a new operating system update. And um, I was thinking about this, and sometimes you click that update and you wish you had the version before. But w what if those upgrades were always good? And what if, what if we were able to just send out uh, an operating system upgrade to all people that would actually upgrade their gratitude? Would you want them to hit that button? Yeah, what if our world just become, became more we're grateful for the things that we have and get to be a part of. I think I'd, I'd hit that button saying, yeah, I want that upgrade. And guess what? I want that upgrade for our worlds. I want it for the people I encounter and I interact with. I want it for the church, that we would be known as a people who are grateful, that we give thanks in and out of seasons. I think I'd, I'd hit that button. Now, the thing that we need to be cautious of, are there, there are other upgrades out there that tempt us and, and come to us and, and our world is wanting us to hit the button of upgrade. There's the materialism upgrade. The material upgrade will, will make you have this desire to have what you don't have. And when you're always desiring what you don't have, it's really hard to be grateful for what you do have. Don't hit that update. There's the envy update. And the envy update is the one where you look at somebody else and you go, wow, I want what they have. And as long as you keep hitting that update, it's gonna be really hard to be a grateful person, grateful for the things that you have. There's the cynicism update. And this update causes us to be skeptical about all things. 
oh, it couldn't be as good as I think it is. And it robs us of being grateful people. We have to be careful as we walk through this world about the updates that are out there. But if there was an update that we could hit for our gratitude, I'd accept it every time. You know, the best way, the best way to remove the bugs of these other updates is through gratitude itself. Practicing gratitude. Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. It's time for an upgrade. Let me share our, our passage today, which Becca already read, but just want to share some teaching on it real quickly out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is verse 18. I want to concentrate on that for just a moment. It says this, the Apostle Paul, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Have you ever wondered what God's will is for your life? You know, I think a lot of times we, we go through relationships where we're trying to impress and win approval from people. Many of you might be trying to win approval from your friend groups. Maybe some of you who are in school, you're trying to win approval. Maybe some of you are trying to win approval from your mother or your, your father. You just, you want to win that approval. And certainly, I think for those of us who follow the Lord, we're, we're trying to oftentimes win approval. Man, if I could just live in such a way that would please the Lord. Well, this verse is such a gift to us because it says here, you, you want to know how to walk in the will of God? Here's how you do it. I love what the Apostle Paul is doing here for us. He's, he's kind of saying, listen, this is not a journey without a map. Christianity, it's not a journey without a map. No, I've given you very clear instructions on how to walk in the will of God. And this is what it means to walk in the will of God, to be thankful in all circumstances. Now, it's really important that Paul doesn't say, be thankful for all circumstances, now, that, I'd have a hard time with that, wouldn't you? I'd have a really hard time with that. What do you mean I'm supposed to be thankful for? For the brokenness of this world? I have to be thankful for the thing that's inflicting me? I have to be thankful for this? No, no, no. What Paul's saying, be thankful in. Be thankful in every circumstance. This is a critical point. I have to tell you, as a, as a pastor, I've had so many privileged moments of walking with people in some of their most difficult seasons of life. And it's amazing for, for people who are really following the Lord and, and pressing in and experiencing the presence of God. I, I've heard this statement so many times from people who have lost loved ones, saying, you know what, this is a miserable moment of life. I'm, I'm suffering in sorrow, but, but I, can, I can sense the peace of the Lord in my life. I can be thankful for his presence. I can think of stories of people who have struggled in their marriages. I can think of stories of, of people who have tried to climb out of addiction, and God met them in those places. And although the season was terrible, Many times people even look back and go, you know what, it's weird for me to say this, but I wouldn't replace that season because I learned about the presence of God in it. And I'm thankful for God and how he met me. I wonder, do you want a gratitude upgrade today? Now, I'm the youngest, and so I can remember at the Thanksgiving table, you, the youngest usually sits either at the kids' table or the very end, right? Right? And I don't know around your tables this Thanksgiving if you had a kid's table. Now, Becca's family is a very big family, six kids, and her youngest sister is still at the kid's table, and she's like 35 years old, right? She's still there. She's still there. Maybe she'll get an upgrade one of these years. Colleen, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen one of these days. Well, I, I think this is a moment for us to say, you know what? I, I no longer want to be at the kid's table of gratitude. It's time to upgrade. It's time to, to step up. And here's, here's what I'd like to do today. Is I'd like to share three stages of gratitude. And they're all really, really good. But there is a sequence that will help us learn and grow in our gratitude. And so I wanted to share these three stages of gratitude. And as I do that, I want to invite you to upgrade your gratitude. 
Maybe for some of you, you're not in stage one. You're stuck in cynicism. You're stuck in bitterness right now. Or you're just stuck in busyness. And you just need to step into stage one and enjoy the goodness of God there. Or maybe you need to step into stage two, stage three. Let me explain these different stages of gratitude. The first is this. Stage one sounds like this. For the. Lord, I am thankful for the. In Deuteronomy chapter eight, Moses is giving a speech near his death, and he's giving it to the people of Israel. And he's telling them two main things. As you read Deuteronomy chapter eight, you see these two words, these two phrases come up over and over and over again. And so here, near his death, Moses is saying to the people of Israel, remember and do not forget. I need you to remember and do not forget forget. As you see this speech, what Moses is telling the people, he's saying, listen, remember how God led you through the wilderness. Remember how God fed you manna every single day he provided for you. Remember how your clothes, they didn't wear out. Your feet, they didn't swell. Remember the Lord when you have plenty. Do not forget that the Lord gave you something to drink in the dry parts of the desert. Do not forget that it was only through the Lord's provision and his power that you had any success at all. Remember, do not forget. And then in verse 10 of Deuteronomy 8, it says this. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the first stage of gratitude for the. Moses is saying this, when God has blessed you, say something. Say something. Say something. Give thanks. When you experience the love of God, give thanks. When you experience his provision, give thanks for the. For the provision. We often, sadly, forget this stage. Yet it's really elementary. And here's how we can step into this stage. You see, a, a gratitude upgrade into this stage means that we remember and we return. We look back and we speak up. All this takes is intentionality. Lord, where have I seen your hand in my life? Lord, I, I want to remember and I want to return. I want to look back and I want to speak up and give thanks for all that you have done. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 18, our passage today in the NIV, it says, give thanks. Give thanks. It's not this just feel thankful. It's almost this profess it. Speak it out. Give thanks for all that the Lord has done. In Luke chapter 17, there's this amazing story of Jesus and these 10 lepers, these people with this terrible disease, this, this illness, this sickness, they were they're cast out of society because of it. These 10 lepers come to Jesus, and Jesus heals all 10 of them. And then he tells them to go to the priest. And they go to the priest, and then it says this. It says, and one of them, I love that, one of them returned and praised Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and says, weren't there 10 of you? We're the other nine. I love in scripture how we read about how God loves the one. He goes after the one with great passion. You were the one. He had the 99, but there was one. So he left and he grabbed the one. God loves every single person. The one, the one, the one. And here, what I love how it highlights, it says, and one of them returned. What it looks like to be the one who is called by Jesus, who is saved by Jesus, who is redeemed and being restored, is to be the one who returns to say, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. And so this first stage of gratitude sounds like this. Jesus, thank you for providing. Thank you for how you've spoken to me. Thank you for, for the. The second stage of gratitude, it's a little deeper. And you need to start with for the, for the. But now the second stage is because of, because of. In Isaiah 41, the Lord speaks through the prophet Isaiah. Here's the context. 
Israel was being threatened by the Assyrian army. They were in great distress. They even began turning to idols instead of God. They were worried about their safety. They had seen the Assyrians take over other people groups, and now the Assyrians were on their doorstep, and they're very worried. And in this worry, in this distress, they begin to turn to other things. And then God speaks through a prophet, and a prophet is simply just somebody who speaks on behalf of God. And the Lord speaks through Isaiah here in the Old Testament, and this is what the Lord says through his prophet. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This reminds me that we can always be thankful because we have God to turn to. He is with us. The first stage of thanksgiving is is conditional in one sense. It's for the when we see God move in our life, for this, for that, for the, the second stage of gratitude is relational. It's because of. I'm thankful because of. Because of your presence in my dark hour, I thank you, Jesus. Because of your presence in my sickness, because of your presence in my doubt in my questions, because of your presence as I face this great trial or this great decision because of your presence, even in the disruption of my life, because of your presence in the brokenness of a relationship, because of the presence, your presence, Jesus, I thank you. See, friends, this stage of gratitude teaches us that thankfulness does not only come from circumstances and situations, but it comes from pure and real presence of God in our lives. Thankfulness is not dependent on a position in life. It's dependent on a person in our life, Jesus Christ. And this is why we can be thankful in every season because God is with us in every season, no matter what. So how do you step into this stage? You might say, you know what? I'm really good at the for the stage. (laughs) I'm really good at that one. At night, I can look back and say, Jesus, I thank you for the, for the, I can do that. But how do I increase my gratitude? How do I upgrade my gratitude in the second stage of because of? And here's what I'd like to say is it comes through intentionality. Spending time with Jesus. Get to know him. Discipline yourself to to spend time, to set aside time to be with Jesus, to pray, to listen to him, and then turn to Jesus throughout your day, in your sadness, in your trial, in that big decision, turn to him, not just in the morning, in the night, but throughout the day. Get to know his presence, host his presence well, turn to him in the day, and thank him for it. Stage three. Stage three is what I call the even when stage. David was a shepherd boy. He turned to be called to be the king of Israel. But David, as we know, and we read his story, King David, he understood trials. He understood difficulty. But I want you to listen to what David David teaches us about gratitude out of one of the most famous psalms in all of scripture, Psalm 23. This is what King David says. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. This next level of gratitude sounds like this. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, Jesus, I will choose to praise you. Even when I'm criticized, hurt, forgotten, I will praise you. Even when my friends post something on social media about me I don't like, I will praise you. Even when I go through sickness, Lord, I will praise you. Even when life doesn't make sense, even when things don't go as expected, I will praise you. Even when I lose a loved one, I will praise you. You can see that this 
level, this stage of gratitude is deeper than the rest. But I want to tell you, friends, the deeper you go, the greater the experience of Jesus in your life you'll have. It's easy to praise him for his provision. It just takes intentionality. It takes remembering and not forgetting, looking back and speaking up. It's a bit deeper to praise him for his presence. This takes not just intentionality, but investment. Spending time with Jesus. It's much harder to praise him even when. Even when we encounter our imperfect and broken world. This takes faith and trust. I'm reminded of the passage Becca read out of Acts 16. This is Paul and Silas now. Jesus has risen from the dead. He's given the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's ascended into heaven. The disciples are out there. Paul encounters Jesus on the road, and now he's out there preaching the gospel and spreading the kingdom of God, and he is not liked because of it. He's thrown into prison, and in this moment, he could have sat in prison and thought to himself, it's all over. The, the, the great call in my life has been disrupted. We can't get out of this one. We're in shackles. He could have been bitter, upset, annoyed, frustrated, and rightfully so. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Of course they were. <laughs> they were thinking to themselves, what are they doing? These guys are insane. Hey, you're in prison right now. What are you doing singing and pray? What has your God done for you lately? <laughs> but I love how Paul and Silas, they could have chosen to rebel against the Lord in that moment. They could have chosen to turn their back on him. They could have chosen to be bitter. They could have chosen all these things. But what they decided to do is they chose to praise the Lord. They praised the Lord. I wonder right now in your trial, are you singing? Are you praising him? You see, God created us in a way that we are created to worship him. That actually our worship is, is healing. That as we turn our attention and our affection to the Lord, it, it's, it's healing. And not only is it healing, it's inviting to the presence of the Lord in your life. I wonder, are you choosing to sing? Even when you don't get what you want. Even when you'd have it another way. Even when you don't see the end result. Will you choose to praise him and thank him? How do you step into this stage? I think it's the most difficult one. But you step into this stage by choosing and choosing again. Choosing to praise him. Choosing to depend on him. Choosing to walk with others in the Lord. Don't walk alone. Invite others in. I love what thanks brings to us. Thanksgiving and gratitude, it leads us to a healthier and happier life. There's so many studies out there that teach us that actually giving thanks, it can, it can bring health into your physical body, into your mental state. It leads us to a right state of mind. It leads us to worship. It leads us through pain. Gratitude is so important. So friends, I wonder, is it time for an upgrade? Do you want to upgrade your gratitude? I want to invite our, our worship team back out, and I just want to lead us in all of our campuses. just want to welcome all of you. I failed to do that in the beginning, those of you in Waterbury and New Milford and in Derby. And uh, I just want to invite us into a time where we upgrade our gratitude. And so let's bow our heads as the team comes out. Lord, we just want to start with a time of confession. I, I must confess, oftentimes in life, Um, I can be the skeptic, the cynic. Sometimes we like to talk about the thing that causes bitterness. How that person angers us, annoys us. How this situation is so difficult. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us upgrade our gratitude. 
that right now, Lord, as we look back, we'd speak up. That we'd acknowledge that you are with us and we'd praise you because of your presence. And right now, Lord, in all of our campuses, I'm sure there are people who are in the middle of a very tough season. But Lord, I pray that we would praise you even when, even when things are difficult. So friends, let me just lead us through a prayer of gratitude. And this is for you to participate in, just wherever you're sitting, in your own heart before the Lord. So Lord, right now, we just, we wanna look back we want to thank you and praise you for how you've walked with us. So Lord, just hear our prayers for the, for the. So friends, just in your own hearts right now, praise Jesus for the, for the. Lord, we want to praise you because of. We don't want to be a people who just praise you when things go our way, when blessing comes into our life. Lord, we want to praise you because of your presence with us. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'd hear our, our thanksgiving right now, our hearts filled with gratitude as we praise you because of your presence in our life. I'm sure there are, there are folks listening to this who are in a challenging season right now. And I, I wanna pray a particular prayer for you. And so if I could, in all of our campuses, if, if right now you're in a season where you really have to choose to thank the Lord even when, maybe there's sickness in your life, maybe there's a challenge, maybe there's a broken relationship, there's just a season you're in right now of depression or addiction, but you want to step into that third stage and, and praise the Lord even when. And you might need to lean on the faith of others in this moment. So I just want to invite you, if that's you, if that resonates with you, would you just put your hand up? Because I want to know if I'm praying for anybody in this moment, this even when. Yeah, lots of us. Just in our campuses too. Yeah, even when. Yeah, Lord, I just pray. For all my friends who put their hand up, just indicating, man, they're in a season right now. They're in a moment of life that's challenging, that's difficult. Something's facing them that doesn't seem right. They've been confronted with the brokenness of this world, the imperfection of this world. But Lord, I'm so thankful that they're willing to put their hand up and say, you know what? I want to praise you, Jesus, even in this storm even when it's the most challenging. And so, Lord, I pray that as they praise you, as they thank you for your presence and your goodness in their life, that they'd actually experience healing in this moment, restoration, that they'd have a, an acute sense that you are walking with them. Bless my friends in this moment. And, Lord, I do pray that you might bring restoration into this situation. Meet them in it. Lord, we thank you. We, love, we have so much to be thankful for. We love you so much. In the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? We want to go out. You know, the most amazing thing is to walk with the Lord. We have so much to praise him for. He sent his one and only son to die for us that we could have relationship, personal relationship with the Lord. Not just now, but as we sang earlier, that we're gonna be able to sing with the angels for eternity with our King. We have so much to be thankful for, and so the band's gonna lead us in a joyful moment here, a joyful moment. So I want you to raise your spirits, because God is good, He's moving in our lives, and we just wanna give Him great thanks. Amen. Yeah. 
Is that all we'll put your hands together? Let's go. Yeah. Oh, one more time. We praise you, Jesus. We've traded our souls and our shame.
Hey there, friends. Thanks so much for joining us for worship today. I want to remind you that we are family here together, and we would love to pray for you today. If you visit walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer, one of our prayer servants will pray with and for whatever concern is on your heart and mind. Please give us the privilege of praying for you today. So now that Thanksgiving has passed, let's talk about Christmas. We have so many things going on in our in-person locations across Connecticut. And if you're local, visit walnuthillcc.org slash Christmas. You can see all of the concerts we have going on and all of our Christmas Eve services that we are having. Here online, we'll be streaming at 9 and 11 a.m. as we would usually on a Sunday morning. It'll be our family celebration service. And we'll also be streaming a service at 7 o'clock p.m. Our candlelight service is a little bit more a liturgical, a little bit more somber and quiet, really reflective opportunity for us to kind of ring in Christmas together. We would love to worship with you this Christmas. And that being said, be free to invite folks to come and worship with us. We really want to engage people in the truth of Christmas, not just the trappings and the presents and the trees, but the baby in the manger. Please be sure to invite your friends. It's a really easy invite. We'll be starting our Christmas series next week called The Road to Christmas as we'll be journeying with the characters of the Christmas story along the roads they actually took during the Christmas story. And he'll give you an opportunity to contemplate what road you are on and how the Lord is meeting you there. It's an opportunity really for people to really reflect on the Christmas story and their kind of their position in it. So we would love for you to invite folks. I can't say that enough because Christmas is a perfect time to invite your friends to worship with you in person or here online. Online is a real easy ask. You know that we're really non-intrusive and we're a real friendly bunch. So please be sure to invite your friends to services. So now, as you go into your week, let me bless you. Why? Because I love you very, very much. We are called to arise and shine. And I pray that this week you would walk into your week with such joy that you would be shining into the dark places of wherever you might go. And as you start this Advent journey, because Advent's starting, I hope that you have the joy of the Lord, not just because of the trappings, but because you're remembering the baby in the manger, the love that God so had for us that he sent his only son to the earth this time of year. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you. Love you so much. See you real soon.